Welcome back to Social Media for Your Business Online. I'm Victor Campos. We've seen that there's not one magic, one-size-fits-all strategy to build followers. Go back and watch that video to reiterate the concept. But let's say you've engaged in those concepts. Perhaps you're starting to build followers, or still you quite haven't. So we have a feature in Twitter where we can check the efficacy of our efforts. We will be able to see on our tweets that we have likes or retweets or replies. But then, but there's a better way to see more data. Depending on what kind of account you have, meaning if you created it right now, like me, or you have an older one, you may have another option called analytics from your menu here. If you don't, you can access it this way. If you go to analytics.twitter.com That'll take you to the analytics measurement tool. Measure and boost your impact on Twitter. So there's a dashboard here that will give you more data than the average user needs. And this can be activated for any kind of account, but obviously it works best for a business account. I'm going to turn on analytics. And I get a brand new screen here, which is separate from the regular Twitter screen. After activating analytics, I should then have analytics from my menu eventually. But again, I can always go back to it by going to analytics.twitter.com. I have various views here. Let's look at this dashboard's anatomy. Home gives me a 28-day summary. On, in November, as I use this more, this is my first day. I've barely been using Twitter for a few hours, so I don't have much to see here. But I would see here tweets that I've made and interactions that I've gotten at a glance. Under tweets, I would see in more detail of the time period in my case, two days, I have 136 impressions. Impressions are that my content was viewed 136 times. I have no followers, but people might still be seeing my content because Twitter, to some degree, is still going to help my content be viewed by more people. These statistics are probably very skewed because I've had the account open for just a few hours. My tweets during this period have earned 68 impressions per day. And all of my recent tweets show here. My very first hello tweet had an impression of 22 units. 22 people saw it. It was seen by 22 it was seen 22 times. No engagement and no engagement rate. Impressions are that people s saw my tweet. It could be that my followers saw the tweet. It could be that someone saw my tweet from a search or any way that a person can see a tweet. An engagement then is someone liked the tweet replied to the tweet, retweeted the tweet, etc. I have no engagements at the moment. Once I start getting engagements, I get an engagement rate. How effective was a tweet? All of these are zero. No one knows I exist. Notice 12 impressions there, 18 here. I'll get charts in various other ways. If I added links to my tweets, how many links how many tweets did I get to those? How many clicks did I get to those links? Averages and so forth. As I tweet more, it'll tell me, well, these are your most effective tweets ranked. 
It can also include replies. So when I tweeted to Molly Nelson, that was a ranking of six, Brandon a ranking of 20. That's giving me an idea that perhaps I should focus on interacting with Brandon a little bit more. Comparatively, two stanky fingers didn't give me very much uh, results, so I may not want to continue to follow up. If any of these have numbers higher than zero, that's a big indicator that I should really start to interact more with a particular account. Not in a level that I'm harassing them, of course. Judiciously, follow up with a tweet in a day or two. Give a follow, give a like, do something to keep on their radar. And then you decide yourself in a week, well, they're not worth it anymore. Move on to someone else. There's promoted, which we'll talk about later. And the more I use Twitter, then I will start to see audience data. Based on what little I've used Twitter so far, the top interest of my of the people I've been interacting with has been comedy, movies and television. So comedy, music, movie news, business news. These have been the top topics. Again, very skewed results. The account is very new. But as this starts to solidify, I can see, well, I should focus on comedy-focused tweets about movies and television. How does that relate to my business? It may or may not. But as I use it more, I can figure that out. These are the occupations of people. Well, how does Twitter know all of this? Twitter and Facebook and all of these networks have a lot of information that they gather on people. Not that they're spying on people, but people tweet about this. People share about this. People are active about all of these topics, and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube gathers all this information. And it's valuable for us as a business because then we can reach the right people. So it seems that the quick and easy audience is a style that people on Twitter have that I may want to tap into. And so far on what I've interacted with, most people have been on AT&T. So that might help me craft a tweet to focus on someone on AT&T that likes home cooking and grilling with a little bit of comedy. These income ga categories will make more sense the more I use Twitter. Demographics show here about ages and education. Sports might be the top genre that I could tap into. In my case, this is way too early to make any serious decisions about tweeting. So that's why you want to be active. Check on it on a weekly basis, or at least on a monthly basis, as you use Twitter, as you build followers, to help you decide, well, these are ideas of what I can tweet about. For more ideas, we then also have events. We've got Christmas, New Year's, the 74th Annual Golden Globe Awards, 99 million tweets on this topic, 45 million on this, 6.5 million on that. We can look at various other events. Sinterklaas in the Netherlands is a 20, 23 day event. The IDFA entertainment lasting 12 days with an average audience size of 227,000. The Los Angeles Auto Show. Starts on November 18th, goes to 10 days. I may tweet about that topic. I can further click, get more details. What's the demographics, the age, the genders, the nations? How are people most seeing this content? Top tweets. Therefore, interacting with the interactors. There are 53 replies to this tweet by Jordan Maron. So I can easily see who they are. 
by clicking on the time and then interacting with them. So lots of data to look at. Lots of ideas. Recurring trends, for example, I often get the question, is there like some sort of list of hashtags that I can tap into, that I can just look up to really use? Here's one place. So these are hashtags and topics that appear on a regular basis. A hashtag is just a glorified topic, but the difference is, if I were to tweet, Happy Holidays, this is different than hashtag Happy Holidays. A hashtag has no spaces and no special characters. So if for some reason I lost my mind and put an apostrophe there, and I put an apostrophe here, the hashtag is actually only Happy Holiday. Notice that the word is no longer that color. So any symbol, happy holiday day, breaks the hashtag. Hashtags have no spaces or symbols, only letters and numbers. So happy holidays 2016 is different than hashtag happy holidays. But the point of a hashtag is that it's an active link. A keyword that people are using that links every other tweet together. Clarence tweeted it with this hashtag, as well as Wayne and Harrison and Jesse and Michael, etc. They're all using this hashtag, and all of their tweets are linked together. A hashtag is basically a search where everyone's tweets are linked together. So here, on these recurring trends, these are hashtags that people use on a regular basis. Follow Friday, Music Monday. These are ideas for me to tweet about, to reach an audience, because lots of people are tweeting on this topic. Hashtag TBT is one of the big ones. Throwback Thursday. So if it were Thursday, I could tweet... Hashtag throw, and it's going to perhaps suggest uh, which, which hash, hashtag to use. Throwback Thursday. The time we sold our first cookie. And if I had a picture about it, I would share it. So now everyone or anyone that is searching for the Throwback Thursday hashtag could find my tweet. And if it's an especially good one, they may like the tweet, retweet the tweet, reply to the tweet, or better yet, follow me to see more of my tweets. So this analytics screen, obviously, is very important. Under more, we have more complex things we could look at, such as Twitter cards. I believe, however, Twitter cards are not working as well as Twitter expected them to work. This is just another way to track your data. It's a bit of a setup to do. You can explore this on your own. I haven't found it to be quite as effective as it was supposed to be for clients, so I don't use it very much. Videos, however, is a new and up-and-coming service that they have that is useful because more and more people care more about video content than plain text content. App Manager is very complex, out of the scope of our class. We are not going to really touch on it. And conversion tracking. This is another complex one that we can't quite get into. You've already got enough on your plate about what to tweet, how to tweet, reaching an audience, and so forth. But this one requires that you set up a way to track conversions, meaning did your tweet go from click to your website to a sale. You need to create a website tag and install it on your website. So this is more work than we can do for this class. You can follow the instructions. You can check out the help screen to help you set it up. But this is the analytics screen. This is a place for you to check your data, 
to make decisions on how to tweet, like a business. What you can also do from this screen is at the top right corner, if you click on the name of your business, you have edit access to this account. If you go there, this is where you will be able to grant more people the ability to help you manage your site, your Twitter account. So you can grant access to more people to log in to help you manage the account. Now what's also important to know about Twitter analytics is that they go hand in hand with Twitter ads. We won't spend a lot of time with Twitter ads. We'll focus more on ads on Facebook when we get to that lesson. But you can pay for your tweets to reach more people. You can pay for more effective results. Instead of spending your time searching, interacting, nurturing an audience, you can pay to reach that audience easier. The problem is many people, when I bring up these topics, they recoil a bit because they think, I have to pay to use Twitter? I have to pay to reach an audience? Short answer is yes. Long answer is yes. And the reason I say that is, think about it in the real world. In the real world, you have to pay for that billboard. You have to pay for that flyer. You have to pay for that poster. You have to pay for that TV commercial. In the digital world, you can get pretty far without paying. You just have to pay in time and effort. So if you have the time to tweet all day long, to tweet once a week, to reply to people, to post something new once a week and so forth, great. But if you have to run your business and you want to tap into the power of social media, oftentimes it's useful to pay to get ahead. We're not going to delve into it very deeply because you can be very successful on Twitter without paying anything. So we'll just touch on it briefly. You have to sign up for Twitter ads. And it's going to be a process where you fill in the account, you add a credit card and all of that. And yes, you will be paying to reach more people. The point of this is, this is what marketing 1.0 always wanted a way to be able to reach the right commercial to the right people easily that coca-cola commercial they have to run it on television or in the ad or in the newspaper and such and they don't quite know who's gonna watch it well if they run a coca-cola commercial on cnn as opposed to mtv they have some semblance of who they're reaching but if they could run that Coca-Cola commercial directly to a certain age group at a certain time of day with a certain group of friends, that might be a better chance of that person buying Coca-Cola. So in the digital world, we are able to target a lot easier. You can pay $5, $10, $1,000. $1, Again, we're not going to really do this in the Twitter lectures, we're going to go into much more detail on the Facebook lectures, because you can also pay Facebook to reach more people. And when we talk about YouTube, you can also pay YouTube to reach more people. But I'm going to focus first on the free stuff, and then add the paid stuff to the class later on. The analytics screen then will give you all of the data to see is my money working for me? Is that $5 that I spent resulting in anything? Do I need to increase my budget or decrease it? And if you think about it, if you buy a really special latte every day or several times a day, that adds up. I read a statistic that people easily spend $1,000 on coffee per year, probably more nowadays. What if you had saved that $1,000 and spent it on marketing on social media? You could be reaching an audience where your return on investment is much higher than, than that initial $1,000. Something to think about. But for the moment, you have the free aspect of Twitter to work on and the analytics screen to help you decide if it's working. That's a good starting point for you to work on Twitter, to ask questions, 
to log into the class and to try it. I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make it drink. So hopefully I've led you to water. It's time for you to drink, my horses. So go on Twitter, try it out, make mistakes, try again, learn from them. And remember that if this testing account was simply for testing, you can always go back to the settings of your account and deactivate. No harm, no foul. So this has been Victor Campos for Social Media for Your Business Online. See you next week.